Chris Brown's an amazing and talented musician, but let's call a thing a thing. He's a abuser of women. R&B superstar Chris Brown is the latest celebrity to now come under focus in the Sean Combs story. Due to a new explosive documentary, older allegations about Brown assaulting a woman at a Combs party are being viewed in a very different light. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Well, another celebrity has been caught up in the Sean Combs legal and PR saga. Maybe nightmare is the way to say it. This time, R&B superstar Chris Brown is who we're talking about. The Grammy Award winning musician behind tracks like Forever, Under the Influence, Run It. Well, an unnamed woman who only goes by Jane Doe spoke out in a new documentary on Investigation Discovery. It is called Chris Brown, A History of Violence. And she claims that what was supposed to be a night of glamour and excess on a Miami yacht turned essentially into a terrifying situation. She accuses Chris Brown of drugging and raping her at a party on this yacht. And this yacht was docked outside of Combs Miami mansion back in December of 2020. Now the location and the timing of this allegation is key. And I'm going to explain why in a moment, but to be clear, she is actually not accusing Sean Combs of any wrongdoing per se. Although again, she claims this happened on his yacht. She did apparently see him though, said he was really nice, but we can't look at these accusations in a vacuum, right? Because what are we talking about? They come under the shadow of all of Combs' legal troubles. He's facing multiple sexual assault lawsuits. He's currently charged with federal sex crimes out in New York, racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion, transportation to engage in prostitution. He sits behind bars after being denied bail multiple times as he awaits his trial, which is currently scheduled for May of next year. And although he's currently fighting that, we've actually covered that on a previous sidebar. Remember, Combs is toxic. He is radioactive. Nobody wants to be associated with him right now, or it appears that way. It appears that everyone is trying to stay away from him and not say anything about him. And of course, not be implicated in what he is accused of doing. And that's why we put so much emphasis on attorney Tony Busby who claims that he represents over 100 Sean Combs accusers and that he has already filed multiple lawsuits against Combs on their behalf, including representing clients who say that they were minors when Combs sexually assaulted them. And he indicated that he would be going after big name people, even reportedly claimed that high profile people have already reached out to him to settle claims so that they aren't mentioned in these lawsuits. And as a point of view, when it comes back to the criminal case, remember Sean Combs is accused of operating a criminal enterprise, a criminal organization, that there was a conspiracy here. You can't enter into a criminal agreement with yourself. There are other people who are part of this or other people who might've witnessed this. And when we talk about co-conspirators, when we talk about potential witnesses, does this include celebrities? Does this include high profile people? We'll talk about that in a second, but let's go back to Chris Brown. Jane Doe says that she stepped onto this luxury vessel and that essentially she was walking into a trap. As the champagne flowed and music pulsed, Brown allegedly handed her drink after drink. She said, quote, I don't remember if I saw him pour it, but I just drank it and he just hands me another drink. She says in the documentary, as I'm standing there, I did start to feel kind of tired and my body was feeling a little heavy. And that is when Brown allegedly led her to a bedroom on the yacht, sprawled out on the bed, and then climbed up on top of her. And literally through tears, she says on the documentary how she couldn't move. And that is when she says Chris Brown assaulted her. The details are stomach churning, but Doe describes feeling so disgusted as Brown allegedly kissed her and literally muffled her protest so she couldn't scream out. She essentially claims that she was powerless to stop the assault, that she was trapped in this drug-induced haze. And in a twisted turn, Jane Doe apparently, after this attack, stayed in contact with Brown, stayed in touch with him, desperately seeking what she says is clarity on what happened here. And she says it wasn't until later on through therapy that she claimed she fully grasped the horror and the reality of what she says happened to her. 
By the way, as we're sorting through these legal issues surrounding Chris Brown, and yeah, they're quite disturbing allegations to say the least, I think it puts an emphasis on how important it is to understand the law. I mean, we talk about it all the time, knowing your legal rights. And look, I can't say that without calling out our incredible sponsor and partner of Sidebar, Morgan and Morgan, because if you should get injured, that's when you need to know your legal rights. That's when you need to know whether you're entitled to compensation. And America's largest injury law firm, they may be who you want in your corner. Morgan & Morgan has a dedicated team of over a thousand attorneys, case specialists, paralegals, investigators, incredible track record. I'll give you an example, I'm talking recent verdicts, $12 million in Florida, $26 million in Philadelphia, $6.8 million in New York, and all of these, mind you, considerably higher than the highest insurance offers in these cases. There's no upfront fee, the whole process can be done straight from your smartphone. So if you're injured, you can easily start a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar. Now, by the way, we've seen this before in a lot of sexual abuse cases. I think most notably the Harvey Weinstein case. Why would you stay in contact with the person who sexually assaulted you? As we have learned through the years, there is a, there are a number of different reasons why that might happen. Sometimes people might not understand what happened to them. They might be in fear. There's a number of different reasons why that happens. They might have this attachment to their uh, abuser. We're gonna talk about whether or not she's credible in a minute, but just keep that in mind. Now, there may be some of you who have just heard this and say, why does this sound so familiar? Well, that is because Jane Doe had already filed a lawsuit against Chris Brown back in 2020. She sued him for $20 million. Now, not only did Chris Brown deny the allegations, but he fired back. He released text messages to prove that this sexual assault didn't happen. This included a nude selfie reportedly sent from Jane Doe to Chris Brown and a text from her to him writing, quote, you were honestly the best bleep I've had and I just want it again. He also apparently shared a voicemail allegedly left by the woman where the voice says, I just want to see you again. Just let me know. If you want me to leave you alone, I will, but I really just wanna, and then a phrase indicating she wanted to have sexual intercourse. Now, Brown ended up taking to social media at the time saying, no more dragging me through the mud. Clearly, you can all see the blue cap emoji. That's blue cap meaning lying. He added, me and my team are taking legal action on this situation. You don't play with people's lives like that. However, Jane Doe, in a statement to People, said that none of the texts disproved the occurrence of the sexual assault. I want people to realize that and stop shaming victims and or calling them liars just because they love an artist they don't even know. In the end, though, her legal team dropped her as a client, and this came after apparently the police department provided them with additional information. At the time, they said this information, quote, precludes us from representing Jane Doe in the Chris Brown matter. And Jane Doe's lawsuit was actually thrown out for what the judge reportedly called a lack of prosecution, meaning there was no activity in the case for a while. And it was dismissed without prejudice, meaning it could be refiled. But having said that, Jane Doe did speak up in this documentary nonetheless. And her attorney, Ariel Mitchell Kidd, who we've spoken about before here on Sidebar, she had represented Combs accuser Adria English at one point in time. Well, Mitchell Kidd said, quote, my client was definitely assaulted and I believe her. She also told People Magazine, I believe what happened to her is 100% true. I feel that I failed her as an attorney because I couldn't make her comfortable enough with me in such a short period of time where she felt 100% comfortable being forthcoming with me. So that makes me wonder, was there more information that wasn't shared to her attorney? Now, the thing about this alleged assault is, and I mentioned it before, Jane Doe claims that this happened on Combs' yacht, that he may have owned it, that he may have chartered it, not sure. But while a Sean Combs affiliated source reportedly told Page Six that these allegations have nothing to do with Diddy at all and have not alleged any wrongdoing against him, we cannot forget that the terms yacht, assault, and Combs, they have all been in the same sentence recently. Because while this alleged assault happened on this yacht back in December of 2020, we can't forget that a young woman named Grace O'Markey filed a separate lawsuit against Sean Combs and his son Christian Combs, where she says that Christian sexually assaulted her on a Combs chartered yacht back in December of 2022. So we're talking relatively similar allegations at a similar time frame, two year difference. 
And we've broken this lawsuit down before, but brief summary are Markey claims that when she was 25 years old, she worked as a steward on Combs yacht. And one night Christian comes aboard. He starts kissing her. He starts groping her that this was allegedly witnessed by another Combs accuser, Rodney Lil Rod Jones. And then she says later on in the night, Christian trapped her in the cinema room of the yacht, took off all of his clothes and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. So she not only sues Christian for claims like assault and battery, but she ends up suing Sean Combs for aiding and abetting and having premises liability because this attack happened essentially on his property. And by law, he would have a duty to keep her safe. We believe this lawsuit is still ongoing, by the way. So now we're looking at these claims a little bit differently because now this is not the first time that we've heard about an alleged assault on a Sean Combs property. But let's go back to Chris Brown for a second. As you can see in the title of this documentary, Chris Brown, A History of Violence, it focuses upon not just this alleged encounter, but all of the other troubles that Brown has faced and the multiple accusations of domestic violence and sexual assault and violence that he has faced over the past several years. And if you recall, what are we talking about? He physically assaulted R&B singer Rihanna back in 2009. Graphic photos were released for the world to see of her injuries and he ended up pleading guilty to assault, received probation, received community service. Brown's ex-girlfriend, Karuchi Tran, obtained a restraining order against him after she says he punched her, threw her down a flight of stairs, threatened to kill her. Another accuser featured in the documentary claims that Chris Brown assaulted her in Las Vegas, which resulted in her receiving a black eye. She ended up suing him, settled the case. Brown was arrested in Paris several years back for alleged rape, but the investigation was dropped. And now Brown's legal team has come forward and they have called the allegations in this documentary malicious and false. But of course, the larger picture becomes not only what will come of such a documentary, that's of course, but could Chris Brown play a role in Sean Combs' prosecution? Has he been interviewed by federal prosecutors? Does he know anything? Has he come under their radar at all? I would say based purely on the accusations and the former cases against Brown, that wouldn't necessarily make him an accomplice or co-conspirator in the racketeering and sex trafficking case against Sean Combs, because first of all, a lot of these allegations have previously been litigated or they would be more likely the focus of state charges but also nothing to suggest that Brown is part of what Combs is accused of. There's no evidence that has surfaced as of yet that Chris Brown was a part of these freak off encounters that are central to Combs' criminal case, the coerced, drug-fueled, sexual trysts involving male commercial sex workers. Also, there's nothing to suggest that Chris Brown was a participant or aware of this alleged criminal enterprise that Sean Combs directed or was in charge of, as prosecutors allege. But again, the question we always ask is, is the government just speaking with anyone and everyone who may have information about what was happening behind the scenes with Sean Combs or who were at these events, whether or not they're even called as witnesses at a trial? Are prosecutors trying to speak with everyone? Look, we don't know who's been issued a subpoena. We don't know who the cooperating witnesses are. We don't even know who all the victims are. A lot of this is kept secret at the federal level, and that's common in federal cases. But whoever was within Combs' orbit, and especially Chris Brown, in light of these allegations, they may have to be thinking if they could play some role somewhere in the criminal case. We'll continue to follow it for you. But that's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.